good afternoon. Got a nice little breeze coming in. It feels good. So how are y'all doing today? What do you think, Shell? It's a lot better now if you see me, right? Just kidding. All right. So time to get to the business end. This weapon here is the Browning Automatic Rifle, BAR. M1918 A2 caliber 30. 1918 was the year that this weapon was adopted. Five years from now, that's going to be a hundred years. Century old weapon. But in World War II, it was invaluable in the Pacific, in the jungles. It was prized and cherished by the Marines. In fact, they thought so much of this weapon that by the end of World War II, they completely changed their table of organization in the squad level to three four-man fire teams. Each of those fire teams had a BAR in their hands. Why? It's good for three things. It is a machine gun that can fire 500 rounds a minute. It also fires the 30-06 round and 30 out 6 just don't get much better than that. Penetration is number 3. Heavy barrel of the VAR. This weapon has a 600 yard range. And because of the heavy barrel, you can operate with black tipped armor piercing rounds that can penetrate thin skinned vehicles, concrete bunkers, masonry, brick, even the wood you see here. Thus, the enemy cannot hide for long if you got enough ammunition. 47 inches in weight. Not a light fella. Weighs in at 20 pounds. Bipod and carrying handle included. It is air cooled, fired from the upper ball position. Thus, air can enter the breech cool barrel. And it is gas operated. Magazine fed on my body. Carry 240 rounds of 30 out 6, and it comes in 12 20 round box magazines, just like you see here. But 240 rounds in a hot spot that's going to go by pretty fast by the end of the day. So, to my left here, I have what's called my A gunner or assistant gunner. The bandolier that he carries is 120 rounds and six magazines just for me. He helps me in target acquisition, range adjustment. You have my BAR jam, he would provide cover fire. But his main job is if I go down the field, he becomes a replacement BAR man. This is shoulder fire and training to require the fire in three different stances. Sitting, kneeling, and the prone position where you use your bipod and butt hinge plate. You were also taught a carryover from World War I, the assault position. Off the hip, underneath the armpit. All right, we we'll fired the BAR. But before I do, I got a little something that I want to share with y'all. A little piece of information. On the receiver right here, got a selector switch. And it toggles the rate of fire to the BAR. It's got two letters, one says F, one says A. Let me explain. F stands for fast. A. Awful fast. <laughs> Come on, that's funny and you know it. All right. Let's do it. Get your ears on. I got it. <laughs> Before I go, ladies and gentlemen, I want to first off say thank you for coming down here today on such a hot day like this. Really appreciate your dedication and your willingness to support this program and what it stands for. And uh, I want, I'm one of many to fully understand why this program is here. Because my love for this, my love for World War II, my love for the VAR, came from a BAR man who served in nine months 
in the European theater during the war. His name was Ben Parrish. And he saw stuff and went through stuff. It's a wonder the man didn't come, never came, came back alive. And I wish all of you could have met him. But he passed away three years ago. Do you know by 2030, all World War II veterans will have passed away? 250,000 VARs were made during World War II. It's not the weapon, though. It's the man behind those weapons that we need to remember, honor, and be thankful and grateful for. You get nothing else out of this program, ladies and gentlemen. Thank the veteran for what they've done for you. Support our servicemen, because I guarantee you if it weren't for men and women like them, you would not be sitting here today watching a program about U.S. Marines in World War II. Thank you guys for having automatic rifles.